want to look at further characteristics of OSPF. So in previous videos, we have looked at OSPF LSA types and also the OSPF stubby areas. In this video, we're going to look at OSPF path selection, route summarization, and this contiguous network with virtual links calculates the link cost. So the metric for OSPF is the cost, and this cost is calculated based on the cost of the interface. So untuk OSPF, cari the best path menggunakan shortest path first calculation. Kita akan tengok the total uh, path cost daripada uh, source ke destination. So, untuk default, uh, router OSPF akan gunakan formula ini. Cost equal the reference bandwidth divide by the interface bandwidth. And reference bandwidth by default is 100 megabits per second. Okay, so in this case, bila kita ada network seperti fast ethernet, compared to a gigabit ethernet, the cost will be the same. Sebab dengan menggunakan calculation ini, kita akan dapat nilai bagi gigabit Ethernet less than 1. Uh, jadi, since value of the reference bandwidth uh, cost ni mesti dalam integer, uh, so the router akan genapkan value tu, 0.01 tu menjadi 1. Uh, balik kepada fast Ethernet, cost dia juga akan jadi 1. So, ini adalah contoh the default cost menggunakan the default reference bandwidth. Jadi, kita nampak bahawa the fast Ethernet, gigabit Ethernet dan juga 10 gigabit Ethernet akan dapat nilai satu. So, kita tak naklah menggunakan default ini sebab by right, uh, interface yang lebih laju akan mempunyai cost yang lebih rendah manakala interface yang lebih slow akan mempunyai kos yang lebih tinggi. Itulah cara kita nak bezakan the best path. Tapi kalau kita gunakan default value of the reference bandwidth, um, OSPF akan kata these three interface types akan mempunyai kos yang sama. So what we can do adalah kita adjust the reference cost. Uh, untuk gigabit Ethernet, kita boleh adjust kepada 1000. Uh, more than uh, gigabit ataupun 10 gigabit dan seterusnya, kita tambahlah 10,000 dan seterusnya. Okay, so untuk uh, kita buat uh, configuration, I have done uh, topology. Okay, so we're going to do configuration on area 0 first. So I have router 1, router 2, router 3 and router 4. What's important about uh, the topic? Reference bandwidth adalah kita nak tengok the effect when we have two interfaces connected to router 1 which is the gigabit Ethernet and also fast Ethernet. So we've seen uh, just now uh, that uh, the cost should be the same. So I'm going to configure the OSPF first here uh, and look at the routing table. As you can see, I've only done uh, the interfaces. Okay, so there's no OSPF configured yet. So let's configure the router one to run OSPF. It should be in both in area zero. And let's configure one look at address. Okay, 
a point to point so that it the local address represent a line. We advertise this look back address. Also, there is zero. So, right now, only router 1 is configured with OSPF. Let's configure router 2. So it's forming neighbor adjacencies with router 1. Let's see if it gets any route. So it's learned the route 192.168.1 from router 1. So I'm advertising all the interfaces that's available uh, on Router 3. Let's configure Router 4. Oh, I think I've done the Router. Oh, so right. There is no router configured. And for neighbor relationship with router 3 and router 2 let's see if it gets any routes okay. so it's learned the network 10.12 and 10.13 uh, 10.12 10.13 and also 192.168.1 so they are forming a neighbor relationship and uh, let's see Let's view the IP routing table again for router 1. Okay, so what I want to highlight here is uh, the effect of the auto cost reference bandwidth. So if you look at This path here, okay, jalan nak ke network 192.168.1 daripada router 4, okay, dia ada dua. Uh, this is called multi-pathing ataupun load balancing. Dalam OSPF, uh, ada term dia panggil multi-pathing lah atau nama lain dia load balancing. So, uh, cost dia adalah 3, uh, ni AD. So, jalan dia adalah daripada Uh, gigabit Ethernet 2 dan Gigabit Ethernet 3. Okay. Alright. So, ini adalah router 4. Jalan nak ke network sini, look back. Okay. Dia akan ambil dua-dua jalan. Melalui sini dan juga melalui sini. Okay. So, sebab apa? Uh, gigabit Ethernet 2 dan fast Ethernet kosong ini dikira sebagai kos yang sama. Alright, so ini adalah sebab 
uh, kita punya uh, default reference bandwidth adalah 100 megabits per second jadi membuatkan kita punya uh, cost total path cost daripada router 4 nak ke network 192.168.1 itu di router 1 sama walaupun interface dia berbeza dia punya speed dan bandwidth So, kalau kita nak uh, dia berbeza, kita tak nak ada dua jalan ni, kita nak jalan yang lebih laju. What we can do adalah, cara pertama adalah we change the auto cost reference bandwidth. So, dia dalam uh, gandaan megabits per second, currently dia adalah 100. So, kita tinggikan sedikit lah. Cost reference. Bandwidth 1000. Okay, so nampak dia bagi warning. Uh, please ensure reference bandwidth is consistent across all routers. That means you need to configure this in all the involved routers. So, saya start dengan R1 dulu. R2. R3. Let's see if it takes any effect. Okay. So, what it does now adalah jalan nak ke 192.168.1.0 daripada router 4 sekarang sudah bertukar untuk menjadi hanya satu sahaja. Dia akan pilih melalui G3. G3 di sini. Okay, dah router 4 ke G3 sebab total path yang ini akan menjadi lebih rendah. Okay, so itulah uh, kita punya efek bila kita modify Auto cost reference bandwidth. Okay, so next kita tak ni, nak tengok mengenai uh, summarization. Okay, so we know that from previous lessons, I've already explained that this is ABR, router 4 dan router 5. Boleh kita panggil dia sebagai ABR, uh, area border router because it has interfaces in both area 0 and area 1, dekat R5 kita ada both interfaces in area 1 and area 56. Okay, so we've learned that router 4 and R router 5 on top of uh, circulating LSA type 1 or type 2, it also circulates LSA type 3 which is a summary. Okay, so kita tengok, uh, I want to form neighbor relationship first between router 4 and router 5. So it's at gigabit Ethernet 4.0. It's already got 10.45.0.4 IP address. So let's advertise this network. That's area 1. Let's just verify. Okay, I've left out something which is very essential for OSPF, which is the router ID.
Okay, so it's forming neighbor relationship. It might take a while. Let's do router 5 first. Okay. So it's in two-way state now. They are deciding who should be uh, the DR and BDR. So actually, kita boleh tukarkan benda ni supaya Uh, mereka tak menjadi uh, tak menjadi DR dan BDR lah sebab sebenarnya dia one to one di sini ok so G4, G4 ni dekat router 4 dengan 5 ni sebenarnya adalah uh, tak perlu pun jadi DR uh, ok so saya tunjuk uh, macam mana Four zero, eh? Four zero. IP, SPF, Network, Point to Point. Ni auto for juga lah. In. Point to Point. So I came out. So now what's important is if router 5 is forming neighbor relationship dengan router 4 and the other OSP routers, it will learn the other networks. See, so dia dah ada inter-area. Inter-area route maksudnya dia mempelajari Area lain selain daripada area dia. So, dia area satu dia, tapi dia belajar network daripada area zero. So, 10.12, 10.13, 10.24, 10.34 as well as 192.1.0. Okay. So, if you look at the routing table from router 5, kita ada ketiga-tiga network ini. Okay. So, sebenarnya ini dihantar oleh router 4. Okay, so remember cara kita nak tengok LSA dekat router adalah show IP OSPF database. Okay, so kita ada beberapa jenis lah di sini. Okay, so kita ada router which is LSA 1. Uh, Net is LSA 2. Uh, okay, sebab ini adalah um, multi-access network. Untuk router uh, LSA 3, uh, it is a summary. Okay, so daripada area 0, ini yang dihantar. Okay, so and then untuk area 1, ini dihantar kepada uh, router 4 dan 5 lah. Okay, 4 dihantar ke 5, 5 hantar ke 4 untuk LSA 1 di dalam area 1. Okay, then dekat area 1, LSA 3 dihantar oleh router 4 mengenai network ini. 10.12.13.24.34 Although it is a summary, tetapi without us manually summarizing these networks, the router 4.4 ni, router 4 akan hantar 4 LSA 3 untuk satu untuk setiap network ini. Okay, uh, sorry, 5 lah termasuk 192.168.1.0. Jadi, daripada LXA1 di area kosong, router 4 akan tukarkan dia menjadi LSA3. Okay, so untuk kita, LSA ini, kegunaan dia adalah to suppress the type of LSA, uh, tetapi dia juga boleh membantu untuk kita kurangkan 
entry dalam routing table. Cara untuk kita kurangkan entry dalam routing table adalah to manually summarize. Okay, so to manually summarize these networks, uh, kita boleh buatlah uh, summarization. So summarization ni kita kena buat dekat router 4 lah untuk kita summarize kan network 10 ni semua supaya kita hanya hantar satu sahaja entry kepada router 5. Okay. So to do this, kita gunakan area 1 and then the network yang kita dah, network address yang kita dah summarize. We've got a essential keyword here, area 1 range. Okay, then the network address yang kita dah summarize. Dan juga the new subnet mask lah. 192.0.0 Okay. Okay. So, uh, the uh, configuration dalam slide might say that you can add a cost at the end. Okay, kat sini. So, itu untuk kalau network tu flapping lah. Okay, for now saya tunjuk yang tidak ada cost lah. Okay. So, let's see if uh, it has any effect. Okay, let's just wait. Uh, it has taken some time. So, let's view <coughs> the routing table of router 5. <clears throat> and let's look at the database. So instead of having three entries at router 5, uh, untuk the network 10, it will only have one entry in the summary, <coughs> which is the LSA3 uh, given by router 4. Let's look at router 4. So the routing table of R4 will still have these networks. Uh, okay, sebab dia ambil daripada area 0. Tapi dia dah create something called a null 0. So it's like a black hole to make sure that the data uh, ataupun route ini tidak hilang lah. Okay, let's look at the database. Now LSA3 <coughs> untuk area 1 juga sudah bertukar. <coughs> menjadi satu. Okay, so dia daripada uh, LSA1 ni okay, dekat area 0 yang diterima oleh uh, router 4, dia akan paskan ke area 1 menjadi LSA3 uh, satu sahaja entry. Berbanding dengan sebelum kita buat summarization, dia ada <coughs> tiga uh, atau empat kata selat saya LSA3 uh, Okay, so itu untuk uh, inter-area summarization. Uh, kita nak tengok pula um, external area summarization. Uh, okay, so for that, uh, kita nak jadikan router 5 sebagai ASBR. Okay, so walaupun I have this labeled as area 56, assuming that it is an OSPF area, sekarang kita nak buat dulu uh, kita nak buat dulu router 6 ni sebagai an external routing ataupun external router lah. Dia jalankan routing protocol yang lain dan dia inject. So remember in my previous lesson, saya cerita mengenai LSA 7. Okay, which means dia bawa uh, external routes. Okay, so sekarang kita nak tengok macam mana uh, ia berfungsi lah. So, I think I've already enabled the interface in router 5. Okay, so the G30 is already 56.0.5. Uh, but it's not configured for any routing. Uh, okay, let's run the R6 first.
IP address. Okay. So let's do um, EIGRP on the connection between router 5 and router 6. Okay, so I'm going to add another interface. Let's create uh, two interface loopback. Start okay, so kita create look back 0 and look back 1 untuk represent as a line from router 6 uh, yang kita akan redistribute kan daripada EIGRP kepada OSPF. Okay, <coughs> so now let's do uh, EIGRP 110 uh, network then dot d6 dot 0 dot 6 So that's router 6. Uh, let's do the same or router 5. This must match. Okay. So I think we have form neighbor JCC. EITRP neighbor. So, since we didn't set uh, any router ID, because it's not taking router ID, it's taking the IP into EIGRP. So, now it's already forming neighbor relationship. Let's view the routing table. Okay, so now, daripada router 6, router 5 mempelajari network 192.6.0 dan 192.6.32. Okay, which what we set for interface look back. Let's view the full routing table. Okay, so kita belajar daripada OSPF uh, yang ini. Dan yang ini. Dan ni daripada EIGRP. Uh, yang ada OIA, OIA which is your OSPF. D adalah daripada EIGRP. So that means router 5 is running uh, two routing protocols. Okay, so sekarang uh, macam mana kita nak redistribute uh, daripada uh, router 5 ni kepada OSPF uh, area 1 dan area 0 apa yang dipelajari daripada EIGRP router 6. Okay, so kita kena buat route redistribution. OSPF then redistribute. EIGRP110 submits. Okay. So, tu command dia uh, untuk redistribute lah. Okay. So, let's check whether this re redistribution is correct. Uh, let's check in router 4. Okay. So, kalau kita tengok di sini, sekarang kat router 4, kita dah dapat belajar network 10.56.0.0 yang ada uh, OE2, external route daripada SPF ni. Kita juga dapat belajar 192.168.6 dan 192.168.6.32. Okay, so kita dah berjaya redistribute. Let's look at router 5 uh, punya database. <coughs> okay, so kita ada... Type 5 KS external link states. 
okay, untuk 56 uh, dan 6 dan 6.32. Let's look at router 4. Uh, so, kita ada summary netlink states uh, <coughs> dan juga type 5 AS external link states itu tadi. Okay, kita tengok router satu ada tak dia belajar. Okay, so dia belajar juga. Tengok database dia. So, kita ada tiga entry untuk type 5 jugalah. Alright. So, sekarang what if we want to summarize kan uh, network uh, daripada 192.168.6 ini. Uh, okay. Kita nak hanya satu entry sahajalah instead of dua type 5 ni. <coughs> kita nak redistribute hanya satu. Okay. So, we're going to do uh, the external route summarization at the ASBR, which is at router 5. Summary address 192.168.6.0. And I think the summarization subnet mask will be much easier. Kita ambil 255.255.255.0. Okay. So, here <coughs> is the route. Um... In router 5. Let's look at router 4. So now, <coughs> the network 192.168.6 dah jadi satu entry sahaja. Let's look at the database. Okay, instead of dua entry for LSA 5, <coughs> Uh, now it has become one entry only. Okay, uh, same if it's at router one. Let's view. Okay, so instead of <coughs> here, uh, two entries uh, previously in type 5 AS external link states, no, now it has become just one. Okay, so this is uh, because I only created two different subnets just to show the short, uh, shortening of the entry lah. Okay, kita tengok hmm. routing table also. So here it will have to entry because I think I disabled the auto cost reference bandwidth before this. Okay, but enough to say that we do not have uh, the different subnets between 6.0 and 6.32. Two, we only have one subnet for the external route. Okay, next I'm going to show uh, the configuration of virtual links. Okay, so this is where we configure uh, this area to be an OSPF area. So I'm going to remove the EIGRP routing. So now the route that we have learned previously from router 6 is removed. Same goes to router 6. I'm going to remove uh, EIGRP. Okay, so now the uh, router 6 only has directly connected routes. So we're going to configure again uh, R5 and R6 to be in OSPF area 56.
is important. Okay, uh, router ID is very important in OSPF. Don't forget. Sometimes I forget to uh, configure the router ID first. Okay. <laughs> first, let's do a show run. Okay, so there's no router EIGRP. And I'm going to remove this summary address also. For now. Let's look to this right now. So I've removed the summary address that we added for uh, external <coughs> routing. Area 56. Okay, so now router 5 has successfully become neighbors with router 4 in area 1 and router 6 in area 56. And it successfully learned through OSPF the network 6.0 and 6.32. Okay, so uh, now let's look at router 6. Okay, so you would assume that router 6, after successfully becoming neighbors with router 5, uh, it would be able to learn the network span from area 0. Uh, but in fact, syarat untuk kita uh, learn daripada kita punya multiple area uh, from area border router, for example, router 5 area border router, sepatutnya dia akan distribute lah network uh, 10.45 dan 10.12, 10.13, 10.34, 10.24 semua kepada router 6. Uh, tetapi kat sini ada kesalahan di mana the area border router, router 5 ni, it must be directly connected to area 0 in order for it to be able to distribute uh, all other networks. Okay, so jadi ini in basic ataupun fundamental SPF, setiap area mesti directly connected kepada area 0. Tetapi dalam topologi ni, area 56 is not directly connected to area 0. Okay, so sometimes dalam kita punya physical topology, sebenarnya mungkin memang kita tak dapat ada router yang connect to area 0 untuk connectkan dia dengan area lain. So dalam SPF, kita ada solution dengan menggunakan virtual link. So virtual link ni seolah-olah kita ada tunnel antara area 56 ke area 0 supaya nampak macam the area border router is directly connected to area 0. Okay, so we're going to configure area 1 to be the virtual link area lah. Okay. So uh, in area 1, we have router 4 and router 5. So we are going to create virtual links or configure virtual links in both of these routers. Jadi router 4 sebagai penghubung daripada area 0 kepada the router 5 uh, or the area border router. And router 5 sebagai penghubung daripada area 56 to the area border router of area 0 which is router 4. So kat sinilah importantnya untuk kita configure router ID dalam OSPF. Okay, so that's why EIGRP not so much but OSPF macam-macam uh, benda perlukan configuration of the router ID. So syaratnya kamu dah selamat configure router ID sebab kita nak letak router ID ni sebagai reference dalam kita punya virtual link. So, I'm going to go in uh, router 4 and inside the router SPF 10, kita letak area 
Y, which is where area router 4 is in, and virtual links. And kita letak the uh, next area punya border router, which is router 5. Okay, next kita buat dekat router 5. Area 1 juga, virtual links. And the route ID of router 4. Okay, so kita tengok. So IP or SPF, virtual links. Uh, the virtual link should be up lah. Okay, so VL kosong ni is one virtual link starting from zero. Uh, and uh, it's configuring connection to router 4.4.4. .4 .4. Okay. So now, <coughs> kita check dekat router 6. Uh, should be there lah sepatutnya. Okay. So now, router 6 sudah dapat mempelajari network. 10.12, 10.13, 10.24, and 10.45 which is inter area. So, dia dapat belajar uh, networks yang ada dalam area 0. Kalau tadi, uh, tak ada. Only directly connected sahaja. Okay, so that's the use of virtual links untuk menghubungkan uh, area lain kepada area 0. Sebab itu syaratlah fundamental uh, requirement untuk SPF to function, each area must have an interface in the area 0. Kalau secara fizikal tak dapat, kita buat secara virtual. Okay, so I think that's it for uh, SPF uh, 2. We've covered, uh, so we've covered summarization, inter-area summarization and also external area summarization and auto cost reference bandwidth and also um, virtual links within uh, using this topology.